it's called a 10 kick composite. So you're going to sample from an area as long as this square, okay? And you're just going to visually estimate that, right? And again, disturbing the substrate with both your hands and your feet. We'll get to that in just a moment. But you're going to do this 10 times over again for each site. Today will be relatively easy because we're going to have four crews going. We'll do two demo samples, and then we'll have each crew do two additional locations. As far as selecting the locations, it's, they call it random, it's really haphazard. You're just trying to apportion your sampling effort across the range of, of uh, water speeds, velocities, and depths with, within the targeted habitat, so within the ripple shallower areas closer to shore as well as deeper areas a little further from the banks towards the middle of the channel okay now the other way that well the other aspect of how we approach this is we're going to go to the lower end first being careful not to disturb anything as we walk through there and we're going to do our demo here at the lower end and then as a group we can start walk, working our way back up river and that thereby ensures that we're not disturbing or we haven't disturbed anything that we'll, we, we will be subsequently sampling as we work back up through it. So as you sample, you generally work in an upriver direction, okay? Collecting your 10 samples as you go. So let's go do it. Sample net very well, just to avoid cross-contamination. When you're finished washing it, and I, I do this a good half dozen times, when you're finished washing it, check the seams to make sure that stuff isn't caught between it. Like, as in this case, there's, there's still more material in there. Probably very old, desiccated material at this point. I imagine the net hasn't been used in a while. But nonetheless, clean it out just to be sure. And then, get your net ready. And make sure, notice, with this net, you've got these sewn seams, okay? They tend to protrude on one side, and then there's a nice clean seam on the other side. Make sure you have those nice clean seams on the inside. Otherwise, when you go to empty this out, you'll have all kinds of critters and organic debris, everything, just stuck in these seams here. You want to make sure your nice clean seams are on the inside, okay? All right. Then, as I mentioned before, you're targeting your most productive habitats, your riffle habitats in this case. And I'd say for purposes of classifying through this reach, what's a riffle and what's not, if you look through here, we're about to lower in here, our goal post or home run mark, whatever it is, it's on, it's right here behind this tree. So this is the lower end of our reach. Looking up through here, I would tend to call all of this habitat, this shallow broken water, it's dominated by cobble and gravel and in some cases boulder substrate. This is all prime riffle habitat, the targeted habitat that we're seeking out. And it extends all the way up through this slightly higher gradient area into that zone where it transitions into that more laminar flow that we walk through, okay? During low flow conditions, that's probably what you would call a run, right? Not much broken water, just real smooth water, but moving at a higher velocity than it would if it were moving through a pool. So we're going to work up through our ripple here. And as I mentioned, we do this 10 times over, okay? We're going to walk out, just essentially haphazardly pick a spot, and if the water depth is shallow enough to allow it, you're first going to disturb the substrate with your hand. When I say disturb the substrate, I mean grab the coarse stuff, one particle at a time, and you're rinsing it and washing it with your fingers in front of the net. Feeling it for organisms such as caddisflies in their cases, and snails, and other critters that may be adhering to it. Now, I don't know how well you folks can see this, but as I'm clearing the coarse substrate away, as I mentioned earlier, what you're left with is a little bed of sand and gravel.
estimating this 46 by 46 centimeter square area. Then I've removed most all of this coarse material. I'm going to start to really disturb everything with my hands. I try to disturb everything to a depth of a couple of inches. And the idea is, as I'm disturbing it, printers dislodge, they get entrained in the water, and they drift right back into the net. Yeah, as for what we have in this sample, probably not much. Um, one thing I tend to do immediately after collecting each individual sample is wash any of the large pieces of detritus in here, inspect them for clinging organisms, and then you can just discard them. Anything that you can do to reduce the sample volume without um, compromising its integrity by accidentally throwing critters out certainly helps. It makes uh, processing in the lab easier, just having less material to work through. And it also uh, allows you to conserve the ethanol that you're using just by having a lower sample volume. You don't have to use as much ethanol. All right, so that's, that's rinsed pretty well. Um, so what do we have here? All right. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, as a result of the recent floods, not much. No. But we do have a couple of larger stoneflies. You can see these. It's remarkable that they've made it through the flood. Here's a, a larger one, and here's a smaller one. These are the same genus. These are both called Terranarsis. The two, notice the two wing cases and the two tails. Here's a smaller one. This is the same genus, again, Terranarsis. This is really rather interesting. I sampled the Green River in the Deerfield just yesterday. These are what I was primarily seeing. The net really helped promote flow through the net. It won't restrict it at all. 